Nice, we got a lot of articles. This is awesome. Um, all right, so let's go over to this. Democrats add momentum to a GOP push to loosen banking rules. The most significant attempt to loosen rules imposed in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis is underway in Congress as the Senate looks to pass legislation within the next month that would roll back restrictions on swaths of the finance industry. Buoyed by their success in rewriting the tax code, the Trump administration and Republican lawmakers have now set their sights on helping the financial industry, which is engaged in a quiet but concerted push to relax many post-crisis rules and regulatory obligations, particularly for thousands of small and medium-sized banks. But unlike the $1.2 trillion tax overhaul, which passed along party lines, the effort to loosen post-crisis rules is somewhat bipartisan. And you know how we're, you know how the corporate media tries to train you, right? When it says bipartisan, that automatically means it's good, right? That, that's what you're taught. Is that the case? Not always. In fact, a lot of times, no. Uh, a lot of times, bipartisan just means the Republicans are essentially getting their way and Democrats have to give it lip service. A lot of times, that's what that is what is meant by bipartisan. Republicans getting their way. Democrats are going to tie it up and put a bow on it uh, in an attempt to not look as weak. So going on that, let's continue with this. The bill would allow hundreds of smaller banks to avoid certain elements of federal oversight, including stress tests, uh, which I, I didn't know that the banks were uh, were – we're working with Scientologists. No, I'm just kidding. This, this is something different. <laughs> Which measures a bank's ability to withstand a severe economic downturn. Under current law, banks with assets of $50 billion or more would be considered systematically important financial institution, institutions and therefore governed by stricter rules, comparatively speaking. All right. Senator Mitch McConnell, the majority leader and Kentucky Republican, is expected to bring the bill to Senate floor within a month. Hurdles remain. The House has already passed its own far more sweeping regulatory effort. And progressive Democrats who warn that the legislation will return Wall Street to its more reckless past are mobilizing in hopes of derailing the legislation, even if that means attacking fellow Democrats who support it. It should be especially if that means attacking fellow Democrats who support it, because no Democrat should be supporting this. After what happened in 2008, uh, and with the way Obama himself deregulating the banking industry and seeing uh, the backlash that came along with it, the Democrats are completely in disarray. No Democrat should be on board with this. So now a banker, <laughs> Forever Third Party says, so now a banker can only open one million fraudulent accounts. Yeah, keep in mind, this is all on the backs of Elizabeth Warren had her most pressing moment when she called out Wells Fargo. And sadly, it was nothing more than verbiage. But now Democrats really need to walk that line. Are they going to? No. But all right. So under the bill, firms with less than $10 billion in assets would be exempt from the quote-unquote stricter rules. Many House Republicans could find it difficult to back a bill that leaves the Bureau unscathed. The Trump administration has signaled its support of the Senate bill with Gary D. Cohen. Cohen, excuse me, director of the White House's National Economic Council. All right, so let's see here. For Democrats, all right. Miss Warren is expected to mobilize her network of progressive activists to oppose the changes to Dodd-Frank. She is even prepared to make her Democratic colleagues cast difficult votes during the amendment process to drive home the point that banks that receive bailout money should not be regulated, deregulated, excuse me. Let me redo that so I'm not misrepresenting here. Democratic colleagues cast difficult, or she is even prepared to make her Democratic colleagues cast difficult votes during the amendment process to drive home the point that banks that receive bailout money should not be deregulated. For Democrats who are crossing Ms. Warren on the issue, the hope is that the fallout will be minimal. Uh, we're going to agree to disagree, said, Dem said Senator Mark Warner, a Virginia Democrat who sits on the banking committee. I don't think this is going to split open the kind of unity you've seen in the Democratic Party. What unity? What unity have we seen in the Democratic Party? The unity of the DNC to squash progressives. We've seen that. That's the only unity we've seen. There's been no other unity. They weren't able to come together to stop uh, the FISA bill. 
So, I mean, it, it takes a lot of guts as of recent to talk about the unity of the Democratic Party, where a bunch of them voted to give to it to, you know, extend warrantless surveillance to Trump, the person that they, they will every day. They'll talk about how how incompetent he is, how dangerous he is, how uh, how he should not have his hand on the nuclear button, but he should have access to all your information. Those are the those are the unified. That's the unified resistance. And now some of them are for ter further deregulation of the banking industry. This is a, this is the resistance, you guys. This is the resistance. And, and yes, Elizabeth Warren should, at the very least, be leading the opposition to this after her uh, after the way she spoke regarding Wells Fargo. Um, gutless Warren, forever voting third party, says gutless Warren on Wells Fargo was not good. I don't know if I would say it was good or not good. I would call it for what it is. What it was was words. That was what it was. I mean, it, there was no action. It was just words. Um, and did those words probably turn on a few people to corruption in the banking industry that they might not have known about prior? Yeah, probably. It probably did. Uh, mostly because of the blogosphere amplifying it. But nonetheless, it probably happened. Uh, so I wouldn't say that's not a good thing or that's a bad thing. Um, but, you know, let's keep it in perspective. Those were words. That's what they were, you know, and, 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 you know, it's a cliche, but it's true. Talk is cheap. Um, lack of action does not lead to accountability. Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm totally with you. Again, words are words. So, and I, I love how it's so shameless. Well, we'll agree to disagree. Says the Democrat who's on the banking committee. Says the guy who is open about the fact that he's bought out. We'll agree to disagree. This is your resistance. This is your resistance. This is why we need a revolution. We have two parties that are bought out. And we'll see what happens here. I'm going to take a, a, a guess and say that this is going to pass with little resistance and nothing more than some verbiage um, from the quote-unquote resistance. And it's going to pass. Hey guys, thanks for watching. That was a clip from Get Your News On with Ron, the world's first viewer curated streaming news show. What does that mean? That means I log on to a stream and people tweet me articles over on Twitter at Ron Placone, or they use our Reddit subsection, which is just Get Your News On with Ron over on Reddit. And that's how we build the show. I'm seeing all these articles for the first time. We are literally getting our news on together. Follow me on Twitter at Ron Placone so you can participate. And this show streams live every Tuesday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so please do tune in. If you want to support this show, you can do so over on patreon.com slash romplacone, where for as low as a dollar a month, you get access to exclusive podcasts every week, exclusive videos, free tickets to shows when I'm performing in your town, and more for as low as a dollar a month. Please do consider it. Thank you so much for your support. This has been Get Your News On with Ron.